In this video I'm going to discuss Mark McMurtry and the people that he knows and the associations that he currently has. Now we all know Mark McMurtry's association with Adrian Brennock. They have been uh, in this uh, since minimum 2014 uh, Freedom Summits. They've been in this at various levels. But uh, the OSTF that Mark McMurtry is convener of and the one that well pretty much he's in charge of it all to go around and get all the signatures from the tribal communities so that he can act on their behalf and do what he convinces them is a positive action for them uh, even if there is any action and likewise when you look at OSTF's actual website like with Nightcap on Minjimble there is a very large absence of the things that you would think that someone would put up there to verify information like with Nightcap on Minjimble they don't have a DA which they say is supposedly existing well put that document up that would be logical. Same with the OSTF, it would also be logical for all the successes that Mark McMurtry talks about that they would also be listed there as pride and place of look we've won this. But strangely there's not much there either in the way of <laughs> any court judgments or anything like that. I suppose there's a good reason for that but just hold on a sec. So one of the documents that is available on the OSTF website is this media release which actually says that the OSTF, the Original Sovereign Tribal Federation, has joined with the Great Australian Party. And if you go down to and when they say they've joined, uh, I will get on a little bit further to show you uh, images of what they say is supposedly this court action that they're taking in the British courts. But uh, just down here, you'll see that for further information, comment or inquiry, contact Rodney Culton, Culleton. Now he's actually named in some file documents referring to one specific case number that is associated with the OSTF and actions that they say they're taking in the court. Uh, I, as I said, I'll just get into that in a minute. Let's find out who Rodney Culleton is. Okay, so this is Rod Culleton that has joined in taking action in the British courts because of Mark McMurkey and what he said. I'm just hold on a sec. Okay, so Rod Culleton is on the um, on the ballot under the Great Australian Party. So ultimately the OSTF is now going political and it is going to use the Great Australian Party to achieve its aims through. And if you remember that the Great Australian Party was actually met, first mentioned by Max Egan a few months ago with Ricardo Bossi, or Bossi, however you want to pronounce his name, and he's <laughs> ex-military. This guy here well, he kind of looks like an ex-car salesman, but let's see what we can find out about this guy because um, it seems that Adrian Brennock and Rod Culleton have something in common and Mark McMurtry seems to have a common element that he is attracted to people with this element. Just hold on a sec. Okay, if you can't read what's on this, 
And uh, if you don't know that actually it was identified on the ballot that that's his full name, Rodney Norman Cullerton, this is actually a bankruptcy sequestrian order. And the date that it was obtained or extracted on the 26th of September 2020, there is no discharge details from his bankruptcy. So given that it's generally a three-year period, you'd have to consider that um, his bankruptcy was extended for some reason and that if this extract has been done on the 26th of September as of that date, which is three years past the date of his um, bankruptcy, he should have been discharged from it, but there's no data held. So clearly he, well, one can only assume at this stage that he has not been discharged from bankruptcy. So this guy over here that can't manage his own affairs, like Adrian Brennock, is being promoted and Mark McMurtry is uh, hitching his wagon to bankrupt people. And you've got to ask yourself if he's going for legitimate means, why he's actually picking people that are shown that they cannot even manage their own affairs correctly. Then bank bankrupts. And it does take a bit to get made bankrupts. If you'll notice here in the, the petitioning creditor uh, was actually a company. Um, so why he owed them so much money why he would not be discharged from his bankruptcy three years after his bankruptcy is, um, well, indication that it's been extended and that he's still an undischarged bankrupt. So what does Mark McMurtry's friends seem to have in common? Well, it seems to be that both Rod and Adrian are bankrupts, undischarged bankrupts, who cannot conduct certain activities. I don't know whether, <laughs> I don't know, from one perspective you'd actually say you've got to be a bankrupt person to get into politics, so maybe it's not that much of a worry if you've stuffed up your personal finances, they don't mind if you try and give give advice that will stuff up a larger community. But I find that a little hard to believe anyway. But So at this stage, you've got Mark McMurtry, who is dealing one side with the Nightcap on Mingenbull development. His, his main partner and developer is Adrian Brennock, who's a bankrupt. And now his other major interest, the OSTF, has got in bed with the Great Australian Party and this guy that's a bankrupt. <laughs> Are we seeing a bit of a theme here with Mark McMurtry and the bankrupt people he deals with? And if I haven't made the warning clear enough in previous videos, I'm going to give it again. If you are in any of the tribal communities, you need to check anything that you have signed with this man or with anyone associated with OSTF, whether it's Robbie Mills or um, David Cole or who knows, they might even have that Jason Sansbury or Banbury, whatever his name is, I can't remember. He seems to be the latest one that they've appointed on one of their OSTF Facebook pages to um, counter the negative narrative that people keep putting out about the OSTF. And it is constant. There is very little support for the OSTF around a small number of, well, you'd have to call them cult followings. 
most of them are not in possession of clear reasoning. They are allowing themselves to be brainwashed by um, Mark McMurtry. And as I've said in previous videos, sorry, I just thought of Alan Hamer and how I made the comparison that the only difference between Mark McMurtry and Alan Hamer is the number of years that they've been spinning this bullshit. Uh, I mean, most people can see through Alan Hamer. So what's your problem with seeing through Mark McMurtry? He's had, you know, in another 10 years' time, he'll still be spinning the same yarn, telling the same stories about successes he's never had. You know, he's as much a success as Alan Hamer. And I bring him up because um, Alan Hamer's... <laughs> Yes, I've had my personal experiences with him and he's certainly, um, yeah, different. But he's been really challenging them all because, you see, Mark McMurtry wants to be king of the tribes. He's been going around under OSTF, signing up and getting the elders to sign who knows what. And he's, he's a white fella. I'm sorry, but, you know, you can't say it any other way. He's trying to sign up all the tribal sovereignty under one thing. And a thing about, you know, maybe it's not about achieving unity or unison as one, but to achieve harmony in the differences. Because unity as one is never going to be achieved amongst the tribes. This is a very well known fact. Every tribe has its own culture, storylines, dream time, songs, dances, um, art, uh, language. Everything is unique in that tribe. And I wouldn't want to give up that uniqueness either. It's part of your culture, your heritage. They're not going to give it up to become in unison. But you can create harmony where the common elements of all the beliefs, like you all have song lines, you all have dream times, you all have art that is the expression of the stories. I mean, and even though your languages are different, you, well, you end up, you're more multilingual than most Australians. <laughs> you have to learn even the language barriers that exist between the tribes that may be your neighbours. And these are lessons that um, someone trying to create unity and create all one tribe under the one basic law and culture, and you can't do it. You cannot take away each individual group's distinct personality and culture and supplant it because this little Mark McMurky says, you know, it's going to be good for you. It's not. And it hasn't been. There are so many that can see how this has divided the community. And it's not just the tribal communities, it's all the community. Because, that, you know, you've got your self-righteous little... Like in uh, America, you, for the BLM, so many of them out there are white holding signs up. You know, it's, it's that guilt that, oh, I want to help, I want to help make up. Because they buy into what this Mark McMurtry says about how everyone's a victim. Well, they're trying to claim back something that they never had in the first place. And it comes down to a little thing that if you look through history, you will see that when a conqueror comes in and conquers the people, they become the conquered. And the conquered live under the conqueror. <laughs> okay? And since then, we have established our own culture. There are people that stick up walls and divides, like this Mark McMurtry, that try and make it a case of... You know, oh, you're being so hard done by, you're such a victim. No, 
you lost. It's that simple. You were conquered a few hundred years ago. And the few that weren't were because of the distance from where they first colonised. Central Australia and the Northern Territory, very harsh uh, environment. I mean, <laughs> Burke and Wells, when they tried, I mean, it was only through the Aboriginals helping them at the time that one of them actually survived. So there were some tribes in Australia, in the northern, in the central and the northern parts, that were not conquered. And they never gave up their sovereignty, and they do actually have autonomy over the land and it is something that people like Mark McMurtry and other tribes uh, that were conquered if you're down the east coast of Australia and all the way around you were conquered New South Wales Queensland Victoria Tassie Adelaide and even round the coast of WA although that would have been later on. I, I'm not so sure about WA. I still think that there would be a lot of ones that were not conquered. And you see, in the sense that you were conquered, you had people come onto your shores and you did not fight. You gave possession of the land. And right or wrong, it's not an issue of rewriting or re-arguing history. There are certain things that occurred that cannot change. And you cannot come at it and say, well, we were never conquered. We never gave up our rights. When in actual fact, there are many within the tribal community that would tell you that is completely wrong. You did give up your rights. You became the conquered. And you have just as many rights as every other citizen in Australia. To reclaim your tribal heritage is a completely separate issue. One that I would think that you would take up with legitimate tribal elders rather than, well, ones that want to set themselves up as king of the tribes that have to get themselves adopted to be legitimised to even think that they've got a right to speak. This Mark McMurtry does not have a right to speak for any of you, to tell you that the laws that he's sprouting can actually come to a successful conclusion. They are founded on flawed philosophies and thinking. This is why he's never got anywhere and he never will. Now, as you can see here from over here where he's listed as Rodney Norman, Rodney N. Up here is Rodney N. Cullerton. And what this is, is actually a claim against the um, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court in Western Australia and other parties. And this action is taken in the UK and up here they've claimed this file number 5882020 now you can't see it in this one but I'm pretty sure in other ones it says Neil Pascoe so it basically says that all interested parties in to declare the status of the validity of the Australia Act 1986 UK and the status for recognition of the Australia Act 1986 um, oh, Commonwealth and two, to declare the validity of a jurisdiction under Queen of Australia within the state of Western Australia. In other words, trying to <laughs> make loopholes, challenging the validity of things with no foundation because ultimately the only evidence they have is opinion and interpretation of what something is meant to mean. But just hang on a sec. Alright, so here is pretty much the same 
thing filled out for the same claim number and the same claimant's name and the same defendant's name except down here we've got the OSTF Original Sovereign Tribal Federation and member tribes that's what I said whatever you've signed whatever he's lumping you into so essentially it is the same kind of document that they've filled out for both circumstances and here the legal representative is Neil I'm pretty sure it's Pasco on another image and here it's the OSTF and member tribes who undoubtedly would use the mouthpiece of Mark McMurtry and as it says here in the legal representative self-representative represented so it would be Mark McMurtry and then it goes up here about uh, what they want to actually achieve orders declaring that no United Kingdom statute including but not limited to the Australia Act 1986 Commonwealth UK and the Act Interpretation Act 1985 Commonwealth has any application in respect of the sovereign tribal peoples of the continent known universally as Australia and that such statutes are not to be used against or in respect of the OSTF member tribes our lands and our resources did you notice how he said our lands he, he wants to be king of the tribes and uh, yeah Alan Hamer wouldn't be very happy about that but you know he wasn't even born in Australia <laughs> yeah so at least you know Mark McMurtry's got half a chance he was born in the country <laughs> and I might point out too that these black blobs on there came from their own censorship because uh, they don't want you to know who specifically these people are and although hang on I'll bring up the next document so this is the second page of the one attached to Neil as you can see it goes from 9a down here to 10 all the way through to 11 now none of these have actually been signed so oh, well the next one is actually signed but this one isn't signed and these were only from a Facebook page that produced these as evidence that uh, they were more valid and more important than another document that somebody else had bought out so this isn't information that has been released by OSTF but by those actually trying to validate their existence but clearly they have access to a certain amount of documentation so that's the Neil part one of it now just let me hang on and I'll bring up the next bit and here's the signature page for the one put through the OSTF and it's signed by Mark McMurtry in what he claims as his tribal name and he's the applicant's legal representative ap uh, litigation friend and down he here he also says he's the convener and CEO of OSTF so he's taking charge over the member tribes as well you have to remember that again this has been blacked out whatever the address was you can see that maybe that was original sovereign tribal federation and an address two address lines so here we have two applications one signed one's not neither show that they've been lodged at all and the PDF through the Great Australia Party said that the court was coming back to convene in September and it was said that the court is looking at their filed application 
Uh, that was in September he's making that declaration. It's now November and I'm pretty sure that you're not going to hear the end result of this case. There is no listing for it in the court in the UK, the named court. The case claim number doesn't exist. They may say that's because it hasn't been presented before the court, but anything listed to be presented to the court has a file date, uh, a trial date or a hearing date attached to it. Or do they, <laughs> is it in limbo land? Anyway, just hang on, I'll bring up another one. So let's review what the two applications made under the same claim number for uh, variations on the same theme. And it wasn't Neil Pascoe, sorry Neil, <laughs> he's one of the past lost investors at Bulla Bulla and NICAP or Minjimble, whichever name you want to call it. Um, the person is actually Neil Pissinen. <laughs> Pickinen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the Neil that they're referring to there, I dare say, where he's the legal representative. And he's in London, England, that's taking this on. You can see here that um, Rodney Norman Cullerton is listed and the well, the documents, I don't know, this has got a seal in February. They actually said here that they wanted to look at a date for a fixed trial between May and July. They think it's going to take one hour. Yeah, sure. Is that one hour for Mark McMurtry to dribble his rubbish? And then what, another hundred hours for them to turn around and show him how every reason he's wrong? Or will it take five minutes for him to start and the judge says, out, <laughs> case dismissed. This may well have happened because, there, as I said, there's no listing. This seal that's on this document, uh, there's no indication, as it says down here, that this is one of how many pages? This, these other documents are not um, one of so many pages, so they are not in any way, shape or form indicated to actually be att attached to this lodgement, whatever that lodgement is. So I just thought I'd introduce the only evidence that's out there of what they've been getting up to or supposedly up to in the High Court in the UK and it's to actually take action against uh, officials in Western Australia. So it's not even, uh, well it's to challenge the authority of pretty much the government and the judicial system in Western Australia. And if you think about it, if they think that they could win out of that, that would essentially invalidate all governments on their argument. But their argument is based on flaws to begin with. And just because it's their way of wanting to interpret it doesn't mean that it is an acceptable way. Anyway, hang on a sec. So let's recap Mark McMurtry's Business Associates. The major developer of Nightcap on Minjimble with him is a bankrupt. There's no if, ands or buts about it. This uh, extract dated the 26th of September 2020 on Rodney Norman Cullerton, who is running for the Great Australian Party, also states that he is an undischarged bankrupt, just like Adrian Brunock. I mean, it has been several months since the extract was done. He may have been discharged. But as of the 26th of September, there was no record of his discharge from bankruptcy. So Mark McMurtry's bankrupt friends that are conducting 
Well, supposed to be legitimate activities. For a start, Adrian Brannock cannot be a developer with him. These two cannot be promoting Nightcap on Minjimble together. Adrian Brennock can't be doing it at all. He's a bankrupt. It is activity he is disqualified from participating in. It's very, very clearly set out. Very clearly. And he cannot escape the fact of the responsibilities of also moving his shares to avoid bankruptcy. So this is the kind of mate that Mark McMurtry gets in bed with. So I wonder, is this person over here that is, well, for all intensive purposes, another undischarged bankrupt? Uh, if he's doing dealings with him, is he anything like Adrian Brannock? Has he got skeletons in the closet he'd prefer to hide? Has he got a reason to suppress anybody's opinion that is negative against him because it threatens to break down the lies that have been manufactured around the story they've built? And it is a story. There's, look at this guy over here, Mark McMurtry, sitting up there thinking he is king on his hill, king over the tribes. I mean, if you really believe half of anything of what he says, if you think that you are giving up one slave master for another, is, I mean, that's actually what you're doing. This guy is a self-confessed want-to-be leader of all the tribes. His ambition is to sign up all tribal nations in Australia under OSTF, under his control. That makes you his servant. Consider that carefully before you want to go and stand up for, oh, he's my bro, it doesn't matter that others have accused him of being a pedo or covering up for pedos like Max Egan, it doesn't matter. You know, if you're my bro, it doesn't matter if people accuse you of such things, we'll stick by you. And then all those that get, that criticise that person for saying, are you kidding me? You're standing up for him covering up for pedos. Nah, you don't do that. You not only don't not cover them up, you expose them and um, you deal with them. Deal with them, uh, yeah, you don't, yeah, you don't cover them up and then turn around like most of them do and pretend that they're actually trying to stop it. They're highlighting activities at an elite level so that people will think that it's not going on at the human being, ordinary, everyday man level. Well, guess what? You're wrong. There's plenty of different cults and occult activity going on in every country. All these little groups. Some of them end up calling themselves terrorists. Well, not themselves, but they get called terrorist organisations. Like, look at Scientology. Is Scientology any different to BLM or to even OSTF? These are radical concepts that are invented to control other people with. Uh, they are not a way to freedom. They are a way for someone to claim mastery over you. And that person is Mark McMurtry. He wants to be king. He's even going to the courts to challenge the government and to challenge the legal system itself. He, he's just such a pompous, arrogant, bloated on his own self-importance person. Ah. Uh, yeah, anyway, enough of that. <laughs> if I haven't made my point by now, I don't think I'm going to make it. 
you know, he, he's got into bed with too many bankrupt people. Bankrupt financially, bankrupt morally, and certainly one of those bankrupts has been conducting criminal activity, concealing his shares, lying to the court about it. That is criminal activity. And any of those involved in helping him do that, yeah, people think that Adrian Brennock's the only one in trouble because of his bankruptcy. No, all the others that knew about it helped him do things too. You're culpable. You aided and abetted. And you conspired with him to actually defraud the creditors, which in this case was the ATO, which makes it a Commonwealth entity. And once you start defrauding a Commonwealth entity, that brings in some pretty other hefty crimes that they can then take on. Because there are some particular kinds of fraud and things like that that are rather serious that can only come because you have attempted to defraud and conspired to defraud a Commonwealth entity like the ATO. So it's not just your ordinary aiding and abetting in this circumstance. It is that you have conspired and aided and abetted to defraud a Commonwealth entity. And it also includes the proviso, whether you knew it or not, you still did it and you're still in the shit for it. And yes, there are several people that are up Shit's Creek without a paddle because of their association with Adrian Brennock and his bankruptcy. And that's just on that side of it. There's a whole other heap full of crimes that they've committed. That's for another video though. This one is to introduce you to the two bankrupts that are a pretty big part of Mark McMurtry's life. Adrian Brennock and Rodney, what's his, Norman Cullerton, the Great Australian Party. So he's now going to get into politics. He's going to follow up all his blusterings in the court that failed in a, well, I suppose I've got a lot of politicians that bluster a lot of hot air and half truths. so I think Mark McMurtry would probably do well. Same with this Rod Cullerton over here. Anyway, that's said and done. I'm going to leave it at that today with Mark McMurtry and his two bankrupt friends that he is participating in major activities with. That if he actually had the intelligence to do any of the things that he's claimed to have done, he certainly would not be in bed with two, two bankrupts. Wow. If you get judged by your friends, I'd say, boom, guilty, Mark McMurtry. You're as a bankrupt man as what they are. Maybe not financially, but you match up in all the other areas because birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to say, catch you next time. <laughs> See you later.